Liberty family. I wanted to share a psalm with you. And this is a psalm that I talked through with some friends of ours who are experiencing uh, some great difficulties in their lives. And as we talk through the difficulty of trusting God in the midst of the darkness, we, we looked at the psalm. And what we did is beforehand, we said, we're gonna just know every time there's this glimmer of hope, just a ray of, of light that comes into the psalm. So I'm gonna read it. And I'd ask you to do this with me as well. Just listen for any glimmer of hope that you hear. This is Psalm 88. It's a song, a psalm of the sons of Korah to the choir master, according to Mahalath Leonath, a mascal of Heman the Ezrahite. O Lord God of my salvation, I cry out day and night before you. Let my prayer come before you. Incline your ear to my cry. For my soul is full of troubles, and my life and my life draws near to Sheol. I'm counted among those who go down to the pit. I'm a man who has no strength, like one set loose from the dead, like the slain that lie in the grave, like those whom you remember no more, for they are cut off from your hand. You have put me in the depths of the pit, in the regions dark and deep. Your wrath lies heavy upon me, and you overwhelm me with all of your waves. Selah. You have caused my companions to shun me. You have made me a horror to them. I am shut in so that I cannot escape. My eye grows dim through sorrow. Every day I call upon you, O Lord. I spread out my hands to you. Do you work wonders for the dead? Do the departed rise up to praise you? Selah. Is your steadfast love declared in the grave or your faithfulness in Abaddon? Are your wonders known in the darkness, or your righteousness in the land of forgetfulness? But I, O oh Lord, cry to you. In the morning my prayer comes before you. O oh Lord, why do you cast my soul away? Why do you hide your, your face from me? Afflicted and close to death, from my youth up I suffer your terrors. I am helpless. Your wrath has swept over me. Your dreadful assaults destroy me. They surround me like a flood all day long. They close in on me together. You have caused my beloved and my friend to shun me. My companions have become darkness. That's the end. Now, if you're listening for rays of sun, sunlight, a little bit of hope, you might have noted in the, noted in the first verse, he says, O oh Lord God of my salvation. Oh, well, here's a, a positive note. But taken with the rest of the psalm, maybe the tone of voice should be a little bit more, I don't know, sarcastic, because the rest of the psalm deals with God not saving him. So how is this an encouragement to someone, to those of us who are struggling? It seems like more darkness to add to our already dark days. But if we take a step back and think for just a moment, if God gave us the scriptures as his revelation to us, that means God was, it was in his hands to place this psalm for us to be reading 2,700, 2,800 years later. So that means God wanted us to read this. A psalm is meant to be sung. It's supposed to be repeated. They're, they're memorized. They're used to, to express emotion and also internalize truth. So because of its presence in the Bible, we know God wanted us to have it. And because of its presence in the book of the Psalms, it's meant to be memorized, sung, repeated, even in public. So what do we do with a psalm like this if we know that God gave it to us and God wants it to be used in our lives. How is this helpful? And I would suggest to you that this psalm in its nature reveals that God is interested and desires our truthful words in the midst of difficulty and frustration and grief. He isn't so much interested in memorized, simple, we would call Sunday school answers. 
He wants us to express our hearts to him because that's the way of moving us from point A to point B in our trust with him. This psalm isn't a place we want to live. We don't want this to be our life verse or the way that our normal days go. Our communications with God are always in this fashion, but they are a legitimate means of communicating with him and he wants us to. Be truthful, be blatant. Say, God, why are your waves crashing over me? Why are you pushing my head under the water? So I view this psalm like as a child, when you had to go to bed, you had to go through a dark passageway. You were leaving a, a, a room of light with your family and you were sent to your room where you had your bed and the safety of your covers and everything that surrounded you. But you had to go from point A to point B and oftentimes the light was out and you were scared where I was, and you'd run as fast as you can down that hallway because you never knew who was chasing you. As though someone had snuck in, was just waiting to grab a little five-year-old from the hallway. It's a hallway, it's a hallway song. It's one that's meant to get us from point A to point B and to be truthful in that moment of darkness and our necessity to cry out to God our salvation. And that is where the strength and encouragement of this psalm lies. It's a prayer. Because the psalmist hasn't quite given up hope that there's still a God to listen to him. He's in that hallway. So I'm praying for you, those of you who are experiencing this hallway, this darkness. May these words be your prayer now. And may you move on to the next psalm as God gives you peace and joy and hope. But if you're not there yet, here's what we can sing.